Let me now put on my economist's hat and ask you about this. As you know, in George Orwell's 1984, the yes. party bans all irregular verbs. It's a kind of excess regulation. But from a social <laughs> point of view, are there too many or too few irregular verbs in English? Uh, <laughs> I, I like the irregular <laughs> verbs. I'd like to see more of them. Uh, but, um, uh, and, and it is, uh, you know, it, it is a, uh, sad when we lose them. We occasionally a new one gets a toehold in the language. Like um, uh, snuck, for example, is about 120 years old. It came in on the analogy of dig dug and um, stink stunk and uh, uh, sing sang sung uh, and strike struck. So occasion what will protect a verb against erosion when it becomes too uncommon is similarity to uh, other verbs. I think it's another property of human memory. One property of human memory is you hear things a lot, they stick in memory better. But another one is if it's similar to other things that are well memorized, it can um, kind of parasitize the memory strength of something nearby in, in, in phonological space. And occasionally there will be uh, analogies. People will coin new verbs, sometimes in, jo in a jocular way, like uh, uh, you're invited to a party. Spice are welcome. You know, instead of spouses, it's kind of a little, you know, <laughs> a, a little bit, uh, a, a little bit jocular. But sometimes these things can uh, can catch on, and that was the case for um, snuck, where originally it was considered kind of cutesy, like sp spice is the plural of spouse. And in fact, people who are older than about 70 or 75 still think that it is a uh, that, it, that it's slang, whereas people younger. Uh, don't see what they what the fuss is about. Uh, are there are there irregular verbs you're afraid to use? Because I have this problem. So think of the word abide. I'm yeah. perfectly happy to say abide, but the past tense abode is thought of as a noun, a place. Yes, right. And then there's a bidden, and then there's the noun abidance, and I won't go near any of those. And every now and then you'll be in a sense yeah. where the notion of abide comes up, and you'll just stick with the present tense and do whatever <laughs> right. circumlocution you need to avoid having to make these other irregular verb commitments? Or do you just go ahead and say stridden? Steven Pinker has stridden into the room. Yes, right. <laughs> uh, yeah, abode has not been in common usage for a few centuries. So, I mean, it's, uh, <laughs> that's one of those that, 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 that dropped out. Like chid is the past tense of chide, for example. Chidden, right? Yes, uh, chidden, or uh, holp is the past tense of help. Some of them survive in, in uh, dialects, you know, in, in Appalachia, in remote parts of uh, the British Isles. Uh, forms that were in use a couple of hundred years ago may have uh, resisted the, the erosion for, for reasons that are completely obscure, par partly capricious. But, um, but yeah, I like them. I like the, the w one distinction that is uh, vanishing that I think is sad is the um, three-way distinction in verbs like sink, sank, sunk, uh, stink, stank, stunk, shrink, shrank, shrunk. Uh, where the shrank and the stank are giving way to the participle form. No shrank and stank. And stank. Uh, no shrank and stank. Yeah. And, and admittedly, it would, it would have been hard to have a movie called Honey, I Shrank the Kids instead of Honey, I Shrunk <laughs> the Kids. But I, I, uh, in my, my style manual, The Sense of Style, I um, recommend hanging on to them. I think they're, they're, they're nice. It's nice to have that three-way distinction because English conjugation is already so uh, kind of depauperate, so degenerate, that it's nice to preserve <laughs> what distinctions that we, we have. <laughs>